And so I wanted to make a concurrent um, cache. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a little too small to read, so I'll sw switch over to the code view real quick. This is not a good cache. This is a cache that I could write in 10 minutes. And so I create a structure, book cache. I create a, <coughs> um, a container field, um, all books, wrap it in a read write lock. That is like a mutex, but um, if it's but you can have as many readers as you want, and only one writer. Writer has to wait for all the readers to go away, and then nobody can read it until it's done writing. It's a um, very handy structure. Um, inside that, we put an option. So there may or may not be a cache list of books with a vector of books. Um, when we first initialize it, we'll create our new read-write lock with no data. Um, and then we just add a simple getter for get all books, which acquires a read lock and returns a copy of the vector. You could probably do this without a copy. I wasn't, I wasn't pushing for super performance here. I was pushing for, for easy to demonstrate. Refresh takes a list of books, gets a, obtains a write lock, replaces the contents of the cache with that list of books. And, and because of the drop trait, the lock will be released as soon as the function exits. And invalidating the cache um, simply empties it. And so we modified uh, the retrieve all books to if let. So if the cache can, of all books contains some data, we'll just return from the cache. If it doesn't, then we'll run the query, store, dump that into the cache, and return books. Um, uh, hold on, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, okay, so then the only other thing I did there is I threw in cache and validation calls on update, on delete, to make sure that uh, um, if the cache changes, then it'll have to be rebuilt. And so now on my MacBook Air, 5,000 requests a second doesn't even break a sweat. So I've stopped doing this, the stupid thing of um, hammer my database for every single request, um, because in this case, there's really no need. We're not adding, deleting, uh, updating books all that often. And this is a really common pattern. Most of the time, your know, writes and updates are far less common than listing what's there. That may not match your traffic pattern, but in this case, it makes a certain amount of sense. And so I stopped this one a little earlier, 116,000. My CPU never got above 22% during the test, and that's two Docker instances talking to one another on my little MacBook Mac Mini. Um, yeah, oh no, my memory usage actually grew to almost five megabytes at one point. I think I can handle that. 22% CPU, not pushing huge amounts of data, but once again, this is, this is a demo. It's not trying to push something live into production. Okay, the question I saw was, how did I get the R REST icon on the right strip of the IDE? And the um, answer there is, I'm using Rust Rover. Um, this is the, it's available free from JetBrains while it's in um, basically alpha. It <clears throat> uh, will flash up with errors quite a lot, but it is a nice, pleasant environment to use. I recommend giving it a go. Uh, they put those icons in. I haven't customized anything because I've really only had this since RustConf. All right, so feeling. Um, I'll I'll answer that in just a second. The um, so how about twenty thousand requests per second? Once again, um, it's still going. My CPU is starting to thrash a little bit up at seventy three percent, but we have no errors. So I can be pretty confident that this service model is going to scale nicely in, um, in production. Um, I'll uh, answer that tool question as soon as I can find the right window. One second. Um, I was using a tool written in Go called Ali, A-L-I. Um, I don't know if I'm probably going to regret trying to run this live, but so if I disappear, it was a bad idea. Yeah, here we go. Um, ALI, it's an open source free tool. It's not the best uh, load generator in the world, 
Um, there are far better tools, but for quickly testing something, um, it does a great job. Uh, we'll display percentile charts and similar. I'm running the whole thing in debug mode right now, which is why it's going a little more slowly, but it's, uh, it's a great tool to keep in your tool belt and one that one that you'll find one that you'll find will serve you well for quick and dirty i want to uh, make i want to make sure that my web service is going to at least kind of scale to whatever sort of level of load that i know i need because most of the time you don't really need 20,000 requests a second okay so that brings us towards the end what have we learned um, SQLX provides a, a lean and mean expressive database layer with migrations as a test fixture system. Axum provides an expressive enterprise ready foundation for web services. Rust integrates great with Docker and containerized builds. And Rust glues everything nicely together, giving you small and really fast and relatively easy to put together um, uh, REST APIs, and it's um, because Rust is so great with concurrency, it's easy to start adding things like caches and not worry about accidentally uh, corrupting your data through a data race because Rust simply won't let you compile it if you have one. So um, in my opinion, Rust is a great choice for line of business REST apps where you um, don't have an existing framework that you want to utilize, or you need something um, really small or really high performance to fill in the gaps. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.